So this morning, outrage. Outrage as New York City students are forced to stay home, attending school remotely again to accommodate nearly 2,000 migrants being housed in their high school. So the migrants' crisis costing New York City taxpayers at least $20 million a month, $6 billion a year coming up, that's what's expected, and set to hit $12 billion total by fiscal year 2025. So House Republican Conference Chair Congresswoman Elise Stefanik joins us now. This is your issue in New York, but also a national issue. When you're seeing the footage, of these families boarding buses to go to James Madison High School. What are your thoughts? It outrages every New Yorker and every American. And if you look at the polling, Brian, 84% of New Yorkers believe that this is a border crisis, and they know it's a direct result of Joe Biden's failed policies. And Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul's failed policies when they rolled out the red carpet, claimed they're a sanctuary city, a sanctuary state. Now look at who's paying the price, hardworking New York families. And in the case of this school, over 60% of those kids come from economically disadvantaged advantage families. Right. That is unacceptable. These parents now don't know what to do, and we know there is a negative impact when you're forced to do remote learning. So it is unacceptable. House Republicans, we passed legislation not allowing illegals to displace students in our schools. The Senate needs to take it up, and we need to secure the border. So what I just showed, I think it's so significant. You know, Park Slope of people around the country is pretty rich. They don't want to put these kids in rich areas where they got huge, fantastic facilities, maybe a lot more room. They stick them in working class areas. That's a tactic, isn't it? It's a tactic, but it's a it's a dangerous tactic, and it's an unfair tactic, and it's one of the it's reasons unfair. why the Republican Party continues to grow. In all demographics, we are expanding our support because it's impacting real people. These crises that Joe Biden has created, number one, which is the border crisis, it's impacting and hurting hardworking families, and that's why we are beginning the process to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. That starts today. Uh, it's going to be tough to get the votes to actually impeach him, but the investigation focuses on what aspect of his job? It focuses on how he is not taking care of our country, which is a constitutional requirement for a cabinet secretary. It also focuses on the fact that he is not executing the laws. Uh, we are seeing this administration leave a border wide open, and it's not just the policy, Brian. It's people have died as a result of the policy. If you look at the fentanyl overdoses, the leading cause of death for people aged 18 to 35. That's a direct result of Joe Biden's open border. So this investigation, this impeachment inquiry is so important to bring transparency to the American people who already know this is a border crisis, but to deliver much needed accountability. Well, yeah, because it's the asylum routes and parole. When they get here, now 90% of the people who get to the border get to stay. Their court dates now for five or six years. I think you have a lot to build on there. We'll see if it'll happen. It hasn't happened since the 1880s, uh, a cabinet official actually getting impeached. Now let's talk about something you know quite well. When you called up and asked these uh, these Ivy League presidents or these elite college presidents come up and speak, you couldn't believe their answers when it came to anti-Semitism and the lack of support for Jewish, uh, Jewish kids on, the, on, uh, on campus. Now you're trying to find out if they followed up to make sure those people that, that with those anti-Semitic riots actually got prosecuted, kicked off, or punished. What are you looking to do? So this is the beginning of a very robust investigation. On Monday of this week, the head of the committee put out a document request to Harvard. They have two weeks to comply. The questions are very in-depth about how they address the rise of anti-Semitism on campus, whether it was disciplinary action taken. We're also looking at the offices of DEI, where we know at Harvard hundreds of students reached out, Jewish students who were concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism. They got zero response. Importantly, it's also looking at governance, the Harvard Corporation who tried to brush this under the rug, and the fact that they tried to cover up the plagiarism scandal, which is very much tied into this because we discovered that with the scrutiny that was much deserved of Claudine Gay. And the big problem is people think it's just three colleges. It's not. Columbia blew off your, your meeting. They had some ridiculous excuse. NYU's an absolute mess, and all other colleges around the country are more like Harvard than not, sadly, when it comes to this. Lastly, uh, no doubt about it. Um, you've emerged as a national figure on pure performance, especially when you see how prepared you are for a lot of these uh, meetings, these, these hearings, and the fact you're in leadership. And you've won the respect, I know, of President Trump. Uh, are you officially somebody that he has spoken to about possibly as a running mate? I'm not going to get into the conversations that I have with President Trump. We speak frequently. I've said for a year now, Brian, I'm proud to be the first member of Congress to have endorsed President Trump for re-election, the first. Uh, and I would be honored to serve in a Trump administration in any capacity. But I will tell you right now, we have a lot of work ahead of us. We have a lot of work ahead of us as House Republicans. We're the last line of defense between single-party Democrat rule. I'm honored to serve as the House Republican Conference Chair. And most importantly, 
importantly, I represent my district every single day. And look at the scandal right now with the Secretary of Defense. I represent thousands of troops from Fort Drum, the 10th Mountain Division, who are deployed in the Middle East right now. It is unacceptable that you have a Secretary of Defense who is not transparent with the White House. So I'm looking forward to being active on that issue to deliver accountability and transparency. And I called for his resignation. So you want him fired? Absolutely. It has an impact on, our, first of all, adversaries are watching. If you look at the national security challenges around the world today, whether the Middle East on right. fire, whether you think about China continuing to be on the rise, continuing to watch for American right. weakness, this asserts American weakness, and it shows the White House has no idea what's going on. The fact that they did not know, the President of the United States did not know, it is unheard of. This is why I called for the secretary to resign. This is why we're doing an, an investigation. Uh, pass a budget, get some uh, uh, border reform, and besides that, finish up strong and, and don't oust your speaker. Those are some of the things on your docket. Elise Stefanik, thanks so much. Thanks. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.